So in this video, I'm going to explain what the polymerase chain reaction is, aka PCR, and how it works. So essentially, I'm just going to refer to it as a PCR from now on, just because it's really easy, and most people refer to it as a PCR. So pretty much a PCR allows for the amplification of a segment of DNA from a very small sample. So let's say you just have like a little bit of DNA from, for example, a crime scene, and you want to make more of it, you want to amplify it in order to do experiments on the DNA. So in this situation, you can use PCR to make more uh, copies of the DNA. So essentially, this polymerase chain reaction is just copying and making more DNA. And so using PCR, it's possible to get thousands to millions of copies of a particular section of DNA from a very small amount of DNA. And as you can kind of see over here already, we have a bunch of, they're called cycles. And so if you start out with two, uh, four copies, let's say, after the 30th cycle, you can get 2 billion copies. So it's exponential amplification. Additionally, PCR can be used in medical and biological research labs for essentially detecting the presence or absence of a gene to help identify if there are pathogens during the infection. So now let's kind of dive into how exactly PCR works. Before we begin, you need to add a couple of things to this reaction for the PCR to work. First, you're definitely going to need a DNA template that you want to copy. You're also going to need primers. You're going to need a DNA polymerase, which is going to synthesize a new copy of DNA. And you need DNTPs. So DNTPs are deoxynucleotide triphosphates. And so they're essentially the adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, just with three phosphate groups. And so remember, those are the building blocks of DNA. So you need those to build the DNA strand. And one thing it's important to mention is that this DNA polymerase is a special kind of DNA polymerase that works best at extremely high temperatures. We'll talk about this in a minute when we get to the exact procedure of PCR. So pretty much during PCR, you use a machine that's pretty much heating something up, then cooling it down, then heating it up and cooling it down again. And so there are three main stages. You have the denaturing stage, which is when the double-stranded DNA is heated to separate it into two single strands. So you're just breaking the double strand. And this is obviously at a very high temperature. And usually it's around 95 degrees Celsius, for example. So almost boiling. And now this goes back to the enzyme. If we use a normal enzyme from humans, the DNA polymerase is more, it's really likely to be denatured and it won't work. And so that's going to be a problem. That's why we use the special enzyme from a bacteria that lives in hot springs and hydrotherm hydrothermal vents. It's called TAC polymerase. And then after the denaturing phase, or denaturing stage, you have the annealing stage. So the temperature is lowered a little bit, so this can allow the DNA primers to attach to the DNA. Then you have the last stage, which is called extension. And then during this phase, the temperature is raised up a little bit, and the new strand of DNA is made by the TAC polymerase enzyme, aka the DNA polymerase in this situation. They're pretty much, they do the same thing. And then you can just repeat this cycle over and over to get more copies of the DNA. Now let's get into a little bit more detail during each step. So during this denaturing stage, we bring it up to 95 degrees Celsius about. And then this high temperature essentially, it breaks the hydrogen bonds that essentially hold the two strands of DNA together. And if you're curious, this step usually takes between 15 to 30 seconds. 
then you have the annealing stage where the temperature has cooled down a little bit to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. And then this allows the primers to attach to their specific location. And remember, primers are single strands of DNA or RNAs that are around 20 to 30 bases in length. And we need this because DNA needs a DNA polymerase needs a free 3' prime OH to add on to. So DNA polymerase needs a primer to work. And so as you can see right here during the annealing stage, we add the primer and add the primer on this strand too. And then finally, we have the extension stage. And then during this step, you increase the heat a little bit more to 72 degrees Celsius. And then this enables the new DNA to be made by the TAC polymerase enzyme. And so just you, so you get an idea of the temperature, TAC polymerase, the enzyme functions very well at 72 degrees Celsius, while if we use the human DNA polymerase, it works ideally at 37 degrees Celsius, which is your body temperature. But at 72 degrees Celsius, it's denatured. And so usually you repeat this um, whole cycle for 20 to 40 times. It takes about a couple hours, and then you'll have lots and lots of DNA that you can use. And so that pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. Comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.